Congress. Oh, really? It'll be out 12, 12, 12. That's when they're going to release it. Nice. Nice. Yeah, so anyway. What's the nature of it? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> can't, can't say a word. Yeah. We've been working on it since February, and we've got the, we're doing five editions, and we got one done. One completely done. Do you know who Tom Mandrake is? Oh, yeah. He's yeah. drawing. Ooh, cool. It's from an original story. I wrote a script 20 years ago and lost it after I'd written it. And, uh, and uh, the guy, Richardson at Dark Horse, said, do you want to do a comic? And I said, sure. He said, it's a deal then, right? It's a deal. And I, and I decided I want to do that comic, that, that script that I wrote. And I believe that the comic is so good that it will end up being a movie. So it'll be like going through the looking glass. Hope you always have a good partner. I did. <laughs> yeah, but there's an even better part than me. Um, this is something that's just, uh, did you guys see it already? Yes. yes. It's on the screen, on the big screen? Yeah. Good. So I, I did some ADR for it, and I, that's all I saw, and it was pretty cool. I was blown away, really, actually. I hope you guys like it as much as this. As, as. You know this uh, guy, Charlie Bean, He's a hell of a director, he really is. I've worked with a lot of, I've done a lot of video games and stuff over recent years. And he's probably the best I've worked with because he, uh, we're, we're, we're searching for it because none of us knew, I, I don't believe that any actor that goes in there after looking at a strong narrative that, that, that is already written can have it automatically. And so he's searching, always searching for it. Oh, it's more like that. Go in that direction. So we would do it, and then I would hear myself, and I'd go, oh, it sounds like I'm, I'm a little acting in that. And unless it's motivated, it does sound like false, you know. And he'd go, no, no, don't worry about it. Let's just, let's just go more in that direction. And then we would find it. And then once you found it, once you find the guy, you can do anything. And, he, and he's always pulling it out of you. And I love the process. I mean, it's, I don't pretend I know everything. I believe me. It's just, it's a search. It's a good search. Your, your voice has always been a really important part of your acting toolbox. When did you first realize that it was uh, sort of a notch above the average? I, I, you know, I really didn't. When, when I was 16, you couldn't even hear my voice. I mean, I talked in a monotone. And, you know, I was in New York, early being a method actor in New York. And I talked literally like this. So I'm going And I went to the actor's studio and how old are you? And I said, 16. He said, get out of here. Get out of here. And it was like a rejection because I, I wasn't, you couldn't hear me. It was like all the kind of hiding. Thought, you know. And then I went to the Guthrie Theater in Minnesota to do, uh, we're doing Cyrano and we did a few other plays, Shakespeare. And this woman named Fran Bennett uh, was part of the Guthrie, uh, you know, crew. And she was a, a voice teacher. And she grabbed my head, shook it around like that, <laughs> said, make a sound, make a sound, make a sound. Shook my head every day for about a month. And finally, my voice went, came out. And I went, stop it. <laughs> it was really true, man. She was brilliant. And, I, and it just happened. It was perfect for me, you know, that that, that happened. And then, of course, I smoked. <laughs> <laughs> But, but it's true, though. You, you can walk around and, and block your voice off right at your neck you know, if, you're not, if you're not aware of how to get it out. You know. How is doing television and science fiction on television changed since you did millennium? Ooh, just like this, like computers and cell phones. I mean, when, when I started millennium, 9-11 hadn't happened. And, and you find that the uses for technology have, have really infiltrated our personal lives. I mean, in a major way. I mean, they're micromanaging us now. You know, that's what I feel. I mean, I'm, I'm not a radical, but I feel that we need to, you know, I, I don't think that that's the right thing, you know, to get into our lives to that degree. And technology is doing it, helping us do it. You, you can, in your new driver's license, when you drive by, they can have a truck on the side of the road that knows everything about you from your driver's license. It will not only find out about all of you know, you know, all the stuff, but it has a chip in it. They read it, and then they go into a bank of information, and mm -hmm. they know everything. That's not right. What happened to the lonesome cowboy that nobody knew who he was? You know, that knew nobody knew who he was. Anyway, Tesla, to me, is the personification of 
of self-doubt and, and, and power, megalomania. When, it, when, it, when I say self-doubt, everything frustrates him. If somebody doesn't do what he wants, it frustrates him. He wants to be resident. He, he just has no place. It's like, he, that's what power does. It makes you drunk and, and, and you know, <laughs> like, like he is, like that's what it is. And this thing, once this trick happens, you can overcome it because you know it's coming. It only worked the first time. But the second <coughs> time, it doesn't quite do it, you know. Anyway. Now, would you say that Tesla is a villain with a cause, or is he just in it just to No, it just, people? the cause is power. The cause is sheer, sheer, I'm, I'm going to live this, this thing until it blows up in my face. He wants to be Clue, but he's not smart enough, I don't think. He's more like the, uh, you know, a, you know, an institutional dud uh, a general that just doesn't, doesn't have the intelligence to go that one step of it. Because on a one to one, he's good, but he, you know, he can manipulate, and push, and derez, threaten. I know people like that. <laughs> I'm from New York. That's right. Is it fun to play a character who's as just legitimately bad as Tesla? Yeah, because I wonder when the, when the spark of morality is going to happen and it's going to completely change. Because nobody can be bad all the time. I mean, there's got to be a moment where they go, "Who am I?" I mean, it's like in Richard the Third. The guy, is, is there? He comes out on the stage and he goes, "Is there a murderer here?" And he goes, "Yeah, it's me." He scares himself. Do you think Kasparovich would make that point? Maybe if the writers hear me saying it, <laughs> if you guys put it down. Maybe. <laughs> that I, I just I just think that nobody can get through life and not pay for everything that they do. So I would rather be the victim than a person, person causing misery on somebody, because I'm not going to have to pay for it again. They are. I'm, I'm certain of that. Have you gotten to be involved in any Prometheus stuff because of your connection to the I, I, not really, but I, somebody through the grapevine, I heard that they're using a digital version of me to describe history. They're very interesting. I can't wait to see it. Neither can my manager. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I can't wait to see it. That's, that's my next movie I'm really waiting for. I love Ridley Scott, Tony Scott. Those guys are great. You've done you've done a lot of science fiction projects throughout your career. Now they they are mainstream. What's it been like as an actor to watch these movies that you know were were sort of special off on their own audience, and now everybody loves that. You know, that all changed when Alien came out. Not Aliens, but Alien. I remember there had been a, a few real A attempts at an A movie, like, you know, Voyage into the Blood, you know, remember that? <coughs> they had a ship that went down, and the guys, it was cornball. I mean, compared to Alien, that was the first, like, seriously, we're going to tell you a, a story that and it looked real, every aspect of it, you know. From then on, it started to happen. Movies got better and better and better and more, and more science fiction and more risky, you know. And even better actors were doing them, you know. I'm not talking about better than in Alien, because those guys were all great, but, but I'm talking about that there was, there was a tongue-in-cheek aspect before that. And then when I saw that one, I was almost in that one, and I'm glad I didn't get the part because then I did Aliens. But I was actually in uh, doing Close Encounters, and we were in India shooting some scenes, running up the mountains and with 5,000 extras. But I, I was supposed to meet Ridley Scott to play one of the roles, and I, I'm glad it never happened, because I would have uh, cast him. That's, okay. life takes those turns, that's for sure. What? We have time for one more question. Oh, God, really? Am I babbling on? You know, <laughs> did I get enough? Answers out there to you guys. Yes, I, Go ahead. That uh, you mentioned that you know science fiction has come all this way. Now you know you've seen how a Tron uprising has been in terms of anime. Do you think animation is also doing the same thing right now? It is. <clears throat> it is. Even comic books. There, they have a they have a way of doing comic books now that they're going to do on the iPad, where it's got a very small amount of animation, like rain or wind or across a beautiful drawing. 
And if you touch the drawing, you hear the voices. So there's no more bubbles. It's like you. That's so cool. That's, a, that's an evolution. You think you'll paint it more seriously nowadays? Like I know they're going to take my comic more seriously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think, I think, yeah, I do. I do. I, there are many more stories to tell than superheroes. Many more. If, if, if we dare, I, mean, I, I decided to do this comic for one dollar. I wanted, I said to them, I'll do the comic, but I only want one dollar. All the money you would have given a writer, I want you to give it to Tom Mandrake, because he does that, the, you know, the lion's share of the work. I mean, we've been on it since February, and what is it, May? And we got our first comic out. I mean, can, that's a lot of work for all of us, but, but it isn't about the money, and it is, it's, it's a demand. This story for me has to be told. So you want to get it out there. You want to get it out there, no matter what.